first person I ever got high with. I was 11, had no idea what meth was. And she called me into the room and she said, hey, here, try this. You'll like it. You'll feel good. So, so I did. Hey, this is Matt Cox, and we're going to be doing a true crime story with Jessica Bell. So check this out. Most people call you Jesse. Most people, yeah. I call you Jess. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. So you were born in South Florida in what? Where? Fort Pierce. Fort Pierce. Mm -hmm. Born in Fort Pierce, which is? A small town uh, just outside of Okeechobee. Right. Yeah. And Okeechobee is an area which is kind of kind of wedged uh, kind of close to the Everglades. Mm -hmm. And it's what what tell me about. Uh, so if you don't know what the Everglades is, the Everglades is a large national park in Florida. And it's it's huge and it's filled with what swampland full of gators and yeah. snakes. And and that's basically where like the Dixie Mafia and cocaine dealers will like, you know, drop drugs and bodies and basically anything that lies in the swamp area gets eaten fairly quickly and it's you know it's a place that's kind of just a dangerous kind of place and it's a uh, very much florida alligator alley runs through it and it's just you know snakes and alligators and it's dangerous and it's a fucked up place so uh and so okeechobee uh is uh what tell me about so basically you were born in um fort pierce but you were raised in Okeechobee. Right. Um, Okeechobee is a small town. It's full of cows, dairies. Um, they have a, a lake there, which is the largest lake in Florida. Um, a lot of fishing. Right. It's what it's known for. Okay. And you're, um, so you were born, so mom and dad are... The so my dad, he has, he's bred cows for as long as I can remember, 30 years. Right. Um, he moved to Okeechobee from Pennsylvania. He met my mom at the dairy. She was milking cows. Um, I mean, I, I see milking cows like like that, but that's not how <laughs> oh, it is. Oh, no, no, they actually are, have like... Yeah, little. these are massive. These are massive like plants. They're, they're, they're huge. Like they've got thousands of cows, right? Yes. How much is the one uh, that you wish work, work at? Have? Um, they have about 5,000 cows. Right. They milk about 2,200 a day, three times a day. Um, so, and basically these, these are, are big places in the middle of nowhere and they have, uh, they, they have housing. Uh, a lot of them are, are immigrants or, or undocumented. How would Juan say Yeah, it? that's how Juan Un was it. Undocumented. Was, yeah. That's for you, Juan. Yeah. So these would be like, yeah, they're illegals there that work the work in these plants or these uh these farms, these dairy farms. Is that it's a dairy farm, right? A dairy farm, yeah. Yeah, these dairy farms. And they, they a lot of them they provide housing and they stay there. And that's uh, you were raised in and dairy houses right. pretty much my well, up until I was twelve. Or even a year ago. Oh yeah. yeah. Well So it doesn't qualify. Yeah. It's a, uh, you, you, a we were working at the dairy, <laughs> yeah, living in one. And I mean, so you know, it's one of the on better, and off. One of the better ones. Thirty, really? Yes. Wow. Um, you figure you have family after family after family that work for these dairies going through. They don't care about these houses. Right. They're just so pretty you, rough. So basically, that's where you were born and you were raised. Mm -hmm. um, um, so tell me about. So how was that uh, growing up? What about brothers, sisters? Um, I have two brothers and one sister. Um, I um, I don't really remember a whole lot. I, I remember um, my mom and my dad were together um, up until I was six. And they split up because they fought all the time over money and gambling. And they liked to, that's what they like to do. And they never saw each other because one worked day shift, one worked night. And... Right. And your dad worked a lot of hours. A lot of hours. Right. Um, so, so after she left, what, what was, what happened then? You were, um, my mom left, she left when I was six and, uh, my dad, he had met a lady named Courtney, which he ended up marrying very quickly after meeting her. Um, I just went blank. Sorry. It's fine. Okay. 
Um, so you met you met Courtney, right? Which he Did made she, right. She moved in the dairy uh, farm or the dairy. Um, did she work at the dairy? Um, she did not. I don't remember her working anywhere. Um, well, I mean, she's taking care of the kids. That's yeah, kind of. I guess you could say that taking care of the kids. Right. How was she as a stepmom? Um, she was horrible. She was. She's not a great person. Um, me and my brother and my sister, we all ended up moving out of my dad's house because of her and to my mom's. Right. So how was how was life with her <clears throat> when you were there? Um. It was strange. Like, we had a strange relationship, not your normal, you know, stepmother. Um, we got high together. She was actually the first person I ever got high with. I was 11, had no idea what meth was. And she called me into the room and she said, Hey, here, try this. You'll like it. You'll feel good. So, so I did. Um, we would hang out and with, with drug dealers, stay out all night. At 11? At 11. Okay. At 11. I never told my dad because I, I didn't want to hurt his feelings. Um, I didn't know how well that would go. Wasn't sure if he'd believe me. He's the kind of person, uh, like, ignore it and it'll go away. Like, he never confronted her um, about being out all night, you know, about any of it. So I just felt like it was better left unsaid right so you're so you're basically you're on and off you said you told me another time like I know bits and pieces of the story so it's like you had told me that you know you were on and off doing math mm -hmm. and your family members were doing math like like who's doing math at this time so everybody in my family except for my dad did drugs my brothers my sister my mom my aunts, everybody. Right. Um, I mean, so what's that, you know, like growing up as a, what, 13, 12, 13, 14 year old girl um, in the middle of Okeechobee, <laughs> surrounded by drug dealers? Drug dealers. And um, it's horrible. I mean, anything that you can think that would happen in that kind of environment to a very mature looking 13, 14 year old happen. Okay. So, uh, at what point do you, does that <laughs> disaster fall apart? Does that, you know, dynamic fall apart with, uh, with your stepmom and your dad and like, how long does that last? Um, it didn't last, um, it's a few years. I'm not real sure. When do you get out of that situation? So I moved out when I was 11. I was almost 12. Okay. Mm. Where'd you go? Um, I moved to Gainesville with my mother. What about your brothers and sister? Did they stay? or? Um, I, my sister had left already um, because of the stepmom. And my brother was just behind me a couple weeks. Okay. Moved in with your mom. Mm -hmm. And your mom is you know, an extremely stable person. <laughs> So yeah. that was wonderful. So the rest of your life went pretty smooth. Yeah, it was great. No, um, my mom is, is very unstable. I'm she's bipolar, um, probably miserable trying to uh, work a waitress job, take care of three kids. Um, so, yeah, she was she was uh, not nice most of the time, yelling, screaming, throwing stuff. How long did you stay with her? Um, I moved out when I was 15. To, uh, I moved in with my grandmother, my grandparents. Which were they, which they actually were pretty stable. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Especially in comparison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The most stable people in my life at that point. So from 15 to what? How long you were there and did anything happen while you were there? You graduated high school. You. Yeah. I started going to high school there. Um, I, I graduated in 04. Um, I was 17. And right after that, I, I went into the military. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the video. I just wanted to quickly let you guys know that other than doing YouTube, I also paint for a living and want to let you know that all of my paintings are available. All of these are what's our modified screen prints. They're all individual. They're all unique. Not one of them is alike. I paint in skulls and crossbones. Sometimes I paint in hearts or X's or whatever. 
the starting price is $2.95. That includes shipping anywhere in the continental United States. I'm going to leave my contact information, my email address in the description, and back to the video. So I went into the military at 17. I, I actually needed a parental consent because I was so young. Um, so my mom signed, and, and I went in as a uh, military police. Okay. Mm -hmm. How long what, did you go in through boot camp, the whole thing? Um, I did. I did boot camp. It was actually one station unit training. I don't know why I can't say that. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went in and actually did a training called OSET, um, where they do your basic training and your job training all in one. Okay. So. All right. So... You stayed in the military for your entire life, and you've been there ever since. It was a career. <laughs> okay, so what happened? Um, I stayed in um, for a few years. Uh, I, w I went home on leave, and I met Johnny Buck. Johnny, Johnny Buck. Buck. Johnny, oh, Johnny Buck. <laughs> um, madly in love with Johnny Buck. Um, I got pregnant. I got out. Um, married Johnny Buck. We had a, a daughter. So what did you guys do? I mean, you're out of the military. You, you, you know, what did you do for a living? Right. So we actually ran a guide service. We took people hunting for a living. Um, we hunted hogs, deer, turkey. Um, it was mostly hogs. Whenever I hear it you was, talk about it, it's it, almost always hogs. Like, yeah. I didn't even know that you hunted anything other than hogs. Yeah. It was mostly hogs, majority of it. How does that work? Like, I mean, I, I didn't even know that was a thing. Until, really? Oh, I didn't even know it was a thing until you had told me. You, you were like, yeah, I was a hog hunter or a hog hunting guide. tour guide yeah. for, you were like, yeah, for six or seven years. I was like, what? what is that? Like, I don't even know what that is. I didn't know that was a thing. I just assumed hunting was you went out hunting. Right. Well, I mean, you get people um, that, that don't know how to hunt or don't know where to go to hunt. You, so, you, you, right, you book an appointment online and we, we take you. We have um, dogs that we train to hunt and we take them out. We track the hogs. When we come up on the hogs, the hunter comes in and they shoot them, kill them however they want, stab them. And then what? Um, we... You just leave the so you just leave the hog there. You get in your car and you go home. Stop doing that. Okay. Well, <laughs> so what happens? Uh, so um, after we kill the hogs, we take them back to the house and um, we have a station where we butcher them. We hang them up, we skin them, and we send them on the way. But how long had you? So how long had you? Um, had you you hunted prior to this? Um, I have hunted, not and you know as a business, but um, I've I've been out hunting. My first deer was when I was. 13 or 14 little six point buck um lots of fishing All right because so yeah it was new so what's um I, remember, I probably should have said this earlier was that like florida mm -hmm. in general like okeechobee and these towns and like the everglades and when people think of florida and i've said this on other podcasts but when people think of florida they think it you know in the rest of the really the whole world mm. that you say florida boom beaches beaches palm trees you know they immediately think you know you know ocean surfing it's you know oh it's beautiful but the truth is that's that's like 10 percent. like 90 percent of florida is you know backwoods backwoods swamp. swamps forests mm -hmm. woods yep um you know just just alligators snakes <laughs> you can't you you know deer yeah um it, it's it's you know so it's it's a it's a lot of that and th so you end up getting people in florida are you know they're i'm not saying they're all rednecks but if, from a normal person's perspective they would say rednecks right. they would say yeah. you know rednecks they're driving suvs and pickup trucks they hunt I mean, you get a lot of that in florida like and because most of the of the Urban areas, that's a very small portion of Florida. Most of it's, there's lots of farms, there's lots of, you know, farm, dairy farms, farms. There's lots of that type of stuff. So, right. trailer the, parks. <laughs> dairy houses. You, did you know, dairy houses. <laughs> did you know that Florida is the trailer park capital there, of the world? There's more trailers in Florida than there are in the rest of the country. I did not know that. It's overwhelming. It's like Florida is also the, uh, the lightning capital of the world. Right. More people get struck by lightning in Florida than they do anywhere else in the world. Central Florida, more specifically. A yeah, hundred people a year on average yeah. get hit by lightning. Hmm. Do you know that? Do you know that? A <laughs> hundred a year makes you not want to go outside. 
<laughs> anyway. Are so, you going outside in the rain? In a lightning storm? Stand, I can't I mean, going outside anyway. It's so fucking hot all the time, except for the last couple weeks. Anyway, okay. Yeah. So <laughs> Johnny Buck. Having a so how was how was life? So married, happy, in love with Johnny Buck, baby little baby girl. Yes, brand new You're house. Hunting for a living. We're hunting for a living. Life is great. It doesn't get any better than that. Um until a friend of ours comes over one night and he has some meth. So we contemplated it. We went back and forth. We're like, should we do this? Uh, why not? But, you know, because we, you guys weren't really at that point. You're no, not doing drugs anymore. No, we were. We had been sober for years, a few years. Right. Yeah, we had been sober. We our relationship, like it's it's for both of us, um, doing drugs, doing meth, um, was an on again, off again thing. Um, so we had been sober and clean for a few years. You know, hunting, new house, new baby, and a friend of ours comes over. With some dope, right? Dope. So you 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 tend to say dope, mm -hmm. but and we talked about this another time. We're like, you'll say dope, and you know that most drug drug whatever drug addicts like, you know, dope could mean to me it's non-specific. You know, it could be meth, it could be heroin, it could be. I don't even know what what other drugs are there. Uh, it could be oxys, it could right. be whatever, it could be, you know, whatever, different types of pills. So you kind of always say dope, dope. But when you say dope, you typically mean, you mean meth. I do, is because, you know, you 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 know your crowd. So right. when you say dope, you automatically know that you're, you're talking about meth. Right, because you're dealing with all meth dealers, right. and meth addicts. And right. Stuff. So what happens, you guys? So we decided that we were going to get high. We got high, um, got high all night. Got high the next night, two nights turned into three, three turned into a week, and a week eventually turned into a few years. What was happening during that period of time? Oh, man, it was like uh, Grand Central Station. People are in and out. Like, it, it's people are taking things. They're always showing up because they want dope, and it was chaos. So you went from this nice little little life to running a, a dope house yeah. people are in and out it's yes <laughs> and that just built that just built a strength within the marriage right because i know that a drug relationship always makes it sturdier and stronger and oh yeah no it ripped me and johnny buck apart you can't have a healthy relationship with with drugs in it period you know that was bad what okay why do you say that i don't know it just, I mean, it deteriorated. So you guys tried to get off several. You, okay. I mean, I, I know the story, so I'm fucking, I'm, 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 I'm telling you the story. So right. did you guys ever try and get off? What happened? Like what um, happened ultimately with that relationship? Um, we did. We tried to get sober a few times. I think that because so much had happened over the, uh, the time that we were getting high, that once we tried to get sober, it just, it just didn't work. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's the whole water under the bridge thing. No, water under the bridge would be it's not a big deal. Uh, really? Yeah, if you say ah, it's just water under. The, to me, that saying ah, water, it's water under the bridge means it's it's not a big deal. Like I'm gonna let it go. Okay. You're saying that what? There's, I mean, to me, that's like the Humpty Dump, Humpty Dumpty, like you know, all the king's horses and all the king's men. They just you know they can't put it back together again. It's right. Just, it's just so damaged. And sometimes I think that happens with a relationship is there's just so much damage to it. And if you can't let it go, there's no recovery. There's just no recovery. Yeah. From and a lot of people do that. They, they have horrible relationships. And then even when they're both in the right frame of mind, one or both of them just can't let it go anymore. It's just too much. So, so what happened with like, you guys moved out of the house? Did you? Um, we did. We decided to uh, pick up and move. We thought that that would help the relationship. Um, we moved to Tampa and, and tried that. That lasted about a month. And uh, we both went our separate ways. Right. How'd you end up back in Okeechobee? How long till you were, you ended up back there? Because you went off for a little bit, tried to uh, work another job, and that didn't work. And how long was that? Yeah, that was about a year. About a year, I tried to uh, work another job and ended up going back to uh, to Okeechobee. 
Okay. Mm. And what happened then? Um, I started dealing, dealing meth. Um, I didn't have a job and I needed money and it's, it's easy and it's fast and it's what I know. So I started dealing and, and going from house to house, couch surfing and it just kind of became my thing. I'm glad um, you do. No, no, I remember, I remember. Because you were couch surfing, you were you were basically selling, you start selling drugs to make mm. ends meet. Yep. But you're still, because cal- it's kind of like a, um, kind of a nomad existence, you mm-hmm. know, existence. Like even, even the guys that I know, well, even the bigger guys that I know that do meth, a lot of times they're constantly changing locations. Like right. they're, you know, I like I interviewed uh, Jessica Kent and she was talking about how like she, you're going, even when you're doing, she's like, even if I'm making $30,000 a month, she's like, I'm still going from place to place. I'm mm-hmm. constantly moving around. Mm-hmm.